Hello, I'm Phil Pan Baker, and this podcast is to support my 2011 RSA conference proposal, Unusable is Insecure. We have a lot of great technology in the information security industry. The problem is that we don't seem to use very much of it. In theory, we have the cryptographic tools to secure every email and every web communication. How often do we use it? Well, secure email is pretty much a bust. I've used secure email once in the past year. When was the last time you used it? In fact, the only community of users that I know that regularly use encryption for all their communications is the specialist community that deals in security vulnerability disclosures. Do lawyers use encrypted email every day? They should, but they don't. The problem is most security software is just too difficult to use and it ends up as shelfware and shelfware doesn't protect anybody. So how do we make security systems easier to use? Well one thing that we need to start with is to start looking at security as a system and recognize that, that system includes human beings. In fact security is all about human beings because if it wasn't for the fact that there are humans with motive and incentives there wouldn't be any security problems in the first place. We've always considered attackers because you know attackers are always ultimately humans because we don't have sentient robots attacking networks only hackers who are humans who use tools. So we always have the attackers in the equation. What about the people? Well, if you read the original RSA paper and you read it talking about Alice and Bob, Alice is a Turing machine. No, Alice is not a Turing machine. Alice is not a computer. Alice is not doing big number prime modulo arithmetic in her head. Really, no, she's not. Alice is a human and she's using a computer and that's what bit us when we discovered that the phishing gangs were attacking the weakest link in the chain and that weakest link was the two feet between the display and the eyeballs of the user. So it's very easy to talk about the importance of usability. Giving engineers practical actionable advice that they can follow to make their systems more usable is rather harder. Now if you read a lot in the usability literature that's written by academics mostly and by people who are in the industry who are mostly concentrating on trying to make products more sellable because that's what affects the bottom line. And both groups very heavily rely on testing because if you're looking to see whether somebody's going to buy this Macintosh computer, what matters is how fast can the salesman make that user comfortable with using it. And the absolute ideal there was a computer that the user could make themselves comfortable using by themselves in 15 minutes. That's a really great goal if your objective is to sell lots and lots of computers. But in the security world, we're not just interested in that initial 15 minute interaction. What we care about is that daily use. How is the user going to behave when they're outside the lab? And that is really, really difficult to measure. That's something that I think the academic field of security usability is only just starting to realize is a problem let alone find a solution. However, there are some very simple rules that could be applied that would identify very clear security usability failures in common products. So, simplest of these is warning boxes. Whenever you have a product that is popping up a warning box saying, saying to the user, warning, what you may be doing is insecure, that's pretty much a sign 
there's something wrong with the usability of that product. Think about it. The user is being told something is insecure. They're not being given any information that tells them how to respond differently. A second problem that comes up is not giving the user enough information. Now, in the usability field, the general idea is the less information you give the user, the better, because you don't want to overload the user with too much information. And in many cases, the security usability failures come from the conventional usability crowd coming in and taking out the information that is necessary for the user to make a security decision. So you go to your bank and the traditional web browser te only tells you you've got a secure connection to one of the million plus people who have an SSL certificate. That's all the padlock icon tells you. Well, what do you do? That's not exactly telling them that they're secure. And they're meant to act on that? I don't think so. Now, we fix some, but not all of those issues with uh, extended validation certificates. But a lot of the reason that we couldn't go further with extended validations and start using logos and systems that would really make an impression on the user was usability people saying, no, you can't distract the user too much. Hmm. You want them to change their behaviour but not distract them. Maybe that's a problem. Hey, you know, usability people are great, but usability people are not security usability people. So a third thing that you can look at is how easy is this system to use when you use it securely. And you don't need any particular sophistication about this. Just go through, you can do it on paper, low fidelity we call that, just do a paper run through and see what steps does the user need to do to perform a common task securely and insecurely. Just map out the steps that they go through. Recording, you know, recording somebody actually doing it can be good in that, you know, that helps you make sure that you don't miss anything. But don't, don't call it an experiment, just go through and do this as an engineering test. And then look back and compare and ask yourself, how easy is it to do it insecurely? How easy is it to do it securely? And then ask yourself, is the difference between the two really something that I can expect somebody to make to do it the secure way? And if the answer is no, go back and work out how you can change your design to make it easy to use. You see, the thing is that usability has to be part of your security design trade-offs. And when you have something that is flagged as a usability error, that has to be something that you start that you take and say, okay, I cannot achieve as much security as I would like, and I can't achieve all my security goals. Which ones don't I?